cameras and behind the scenes, Edward James almost has earned a reputation as a man who knows exactly what he wants and has no trouble asking for it. That's right. Recently, we met up with him in Spanish Harlem and asked him about his family, his values, and a new project he's working on celebrating our Latino culture and Hispanic heritage. Why are you so focused on community? I think you can be either wisely selfish or foolishly selfish. Every human being is selfish. A wise, uh, let's take a fully selfish person, is a person who gets up in the morning, says his prayers, uh, makes sure the family's okay off the work they go, they come back from working hard, they make sure the family's okay, they say their prayers and they go to sleep. That's a foolish, selfish person. A wise, selfish person, a person gets up in the morning, says their prayers, uh, you know, make sure the family's okay off the work they go, they come back from working real hard, they say, they make sure their family's okay. But just before they say their prayers and just before they go to sleep, they open the front door and they look across the street to make sure their neighbor's okay. They know that their community is the essence on their family. They open that door to make sure the neighbor's okay so that that means that their kid is okay when they walk out into that neighborhood. That's why the old African proverb is so true. You know, it takes an entire village to raise a child. The community is responsible for its youth. The youth are responsible for understanding themselves to the best of their ability and then making choices for themselves. But a lot of our kids of color, especially Latinos, don't really have a choice because they're inundated with a certain lifestyle upon birth and they're growing up in that environment and that environment dictates to them a certain behavior. And they think that that is the only choice they have. And that is not true. They have many choices. Hi, this is Edward James Olmos, and as an actor, I've had many important roles, but none as important as the role the Shriners play in the lives of young children. I asked the Puerto Rican, the Mexican, the Cuban, I said, who, is there someone out there that really you feel represents us, that really cares about the community, that really gives a lot of his or her time? And uh, most of my answers, a large portion of my answers, were always uh, they would always go back to Edward James Olmos. Well, I see you brought some friends with you this time. Uh, tell us who they are and what's their purpose here. What, what Angel, these are not only friends, but they're uh, true artists and um, uh, great human beings. And, and I'm honored and privileged to be working with them. Uh, Manny Monterrey is the executive director of, uh, of a book that we are working on at the present time. And uh, sitting right here to my left is uh, an old and dear friend of mine, Dr. Lea Ibarra is uh, the president of our publishing uh, wing of our production company. And this book that we're talking about right now, we came into New York to, to work on Reflexiones, Reflections, is a uh, timely piece. It's uh, one of a kind, it's never been done before, and there are going to be images that are presenting uh, Latinos from all over the planet that have come here and contributed to the advancement of the, uh, the America that we know today, the United States of America. We're going to be developing educational guides that will be uh, geared to our elementary school children, middle school children, and high school students, so that they can learn their history and, and be proud of who they are at the same time, so it won't just be looking at photographs, but um, those photographs and what they mean to us as a people. This book will give us a great look at what the Latino has been able to contribute uh, to us bring, going into the 21st century. And so we'll ride at a higher crest than we did when we started in this quest. How would you like to be remembered? Uh, my biggest hope and my biggest dream is to be the oldest living almost in the history of our family. I have to be 87, and I am planning to try to do that. If not, I'm going to die trying. <laughs>